Hello, this is a modern church searches for a new pastor. Among the characters of the Bible. Something I found on the internet with a few editions of mine. So let's take a look. Hello everybody, I'm Elder So-and-so, and we want to thank you for all the candidates that were submitted to be pastor of this church. We do not have a happy report to give. However, we do have one last promising candidate. Well, and with all the suggestions that we got, we followed up each one with interviews. I'll give you a summary of what we found. Adam, a good man, but problems with his wife. So, no way. Noah, he had a former pastorate of 120 years with no converts, none, prone to unrealistic building projects. Enoch, he was a godly man, but then just left his pastorage. Some say that God took him. We took a look at Abraham, and though the references reported wife-swapping, Boy, what a swinger, huh? The facts seem to show that he never slept with another man's wife. However, he did offer to share his own wife with another man. Eh, I don't think we need swingers in this church. What do you, you know, no way. Joseph, a big thinker, a big thinker, but a braggart. He believes in dream interpreting and he has a prison record. Like we need a convict for our pastor, you know? And then there's Moses. A modern and meek man, but a poor communicator, even stuttering at times. We've heard that sometimes he blows his stack at Acts rashly. Some say that he left an earlier church over a murder charge. I don't know about that. Is that what we really need? And then there was David, the most promising leader of all until he discovered the affair that he had with his neighbor's wife. Solomon, a great preacher, but our parsonage could never hold all of those wives. Is this guy some kind of a Mormon or what? And then there's Samson, a strong leader, but very poor judgment on picking a life partner. And the guy looks like a hippie. So, no thanks. Well, then there was Elijah, the prophet, prone to depression and collapses under pressure. So, I don't know. Then there was Elisha, but he was reported to have lived with a single widow at his former church. Can you imagine that? Well, and then we have Hosea, a tender and loving pastor, but our people could never handle his wife's occupation. And then there's Jeremiah, but he's emotionally unstable, an alarmist, negative, always lamenting things. He even tr took a trip to the river to bury his underwear. I mean, what kind of a nutcase is this guy? No way. So, let's see. Then there's Isaiah. This guy's on the fringe. Claims to have seen angels in the church and has trouble with his language. And then you got Jonah. He refused God's call into the ministry until he was forced to obey by getting swallowed by a great fish. He told us later that the 
fish spit him out on the shore not too far from here. Uh, we hung up. <laughs> Guy's nuts. Amos, too backward and unpolished. With some seminary training, he might be okay, but he hates rich people. He might fit in better with a poor congregation. That's my opinion. And then you've got Malachi. Malachi talks about God hating Jacob's brother. Doesn't he know God? Our God's a God of love? All right, then we took a look at John. Well, John says he's a Baptist, but he certainly doesn't dress like one. He, he showed up for an interview dressed in, in camel skins. I mean, at least have the respect to show up in a nice suit and tie. And then he sleeps outdoors for months, has a weird diet, and, and he provokes the denominational leaders by calling them serpents and a generation of vipers. No way. So then we called Peter. Peter is just too blue collar. He's got a bad temper, and he's even been known to curse. And he had a big run-in with Paul at Antioch. Aggressive, but a loose cannon. And like I say, too blue collar for us. So, now Paul. Paul is a powerful CEO type leader and a fascinating preacher. However, he's short on tact, unforgiving with younger ministers. But to top it all off, he's been known to preach all night. Doesn't he know that we've got things to do? And then there's Timothy. He's inexperienced and way too young. So, now we called Jesus. Now, Jesus had popular times in the past. But one time when his church grew to over 5,000 people, he managed to offend them all. And then he dropped down to the original 12. His church dwindled down to 12 people. And of course, he seldom stays in one place for very long. And he's single. So he is absolutely not qualified. We can't have an unmarried pastor at our church eyeing our young, attractive, single women. That's always been the unspoken rule among churches. You got to have a married pastor. So Jesus is uh, being single, that alone disqualifies him. Now, we've got one last candidate, Judas Iscariot. His references are solid. He's a steady plotter. He's conservative. He has good connections and gets along well with the denominational leaders. And he knows how to handle money, which I think is a very, very important thing in today's climate. So, we are inviting him to preach this Sunday. So far, he seems like the best candidate so far. Possibilities here. And his wife, Jezebel, is a prophetess. Looks promising, people. So that's the end of that. This today is the modern church. Having never read, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I don't think it's that far off the mark with these 501c3 corporations mask, uh, masquerading as churches, or, well, you know, a state-chartered corporation masquerading with the name church in it. So, all right, Chaplain Bob signing off.